Welcome to the Vans Hobby Lab. This is the second episode of the multi-part series on Project Microhex. Today, we will be examining the power requirements for a hexapod robot and making decisions about what batteries to use. In my previous Spot Micro build, I used a two-cell LiPo battery with a buck converter to provide 5 volts to the Raspberry Pi. And the servos could then just run directly off the said 0.4 volts from the battery. This time, I'm using micro servos and a Pi Pico. I want to get everything running off 5 volts. I should be able to get 5 volts from the 4 AA batteries, which would be nice because then I wouldn't need any extra electronics. However, I'm not sure if I can get enough current from the AA's. My fallback would be to use a buck converter as I did before. However, I don't know if I can power all the servos from a single buck converter. We'll find out. I've already acquired a Raspberry Pi Pico W and 18 MG90S servos that I'll be using for this project. First, I need to unpack the 18 servos. I removed the servo and set aside the little bag of accessories for later. I just have to do that 17 more times. This could take a while. And we're done. To make the testing easier, I printed these small brackets. Each bracket holds three micro servos just like a single leg on the hexapod. I printed off 6 of them, so I only have to maintain 6 brackets instead of 18 servos. To start the testing, I will be using my desktop power supply with it set to 5 volts. I plugged all 18 servos into a breadboard with the Pico. I have hooked up my desktop power supply and a voltmeter. I am now going to measure current. I have uploaded a simple program to the Pico that just moves all the servos back and forth. It seems to max out about 1.9 amps. However, I noticed something weird with the servos. The servos look to be underpowered. I attached a servo horn to one of the servos so you can better see its movements. You can see how the servo seems to be struggling. I think this might be an issue with resistance. I don't think these breadboards were designed to deliver power as much as convey a signal. I ended up doubling up the input wires from the power supply to reduce resistance and see if that helps. It looks like the servos are fully powered now, and the multimeter maxes out around 2.6 amps. Now I want to try swapping out the desktop power supply for 4 AA batteries. I can confirm that they're running at 5 volts. You can see it maxes out at 6.4 amps. However, the servos seem very underpowered. I don't think this is going to be a viable solution. So moving on to my fallback. I picked up this buck converter off Amazon. It has multiple voltage outputs including 5 volt. And it supports up to 3 amps of current. Compared to the one I used for my spot micro build, this one is smaller and lacks a variable resistor to control the voltage output. To prepare the new buck converter, I first have to solder on some wires. I start by tinning the battery terminal wires. With a little extra solder, I can attach them to the board. I can then do the same thing for the output wires. And finally, I need to solder the 5 volt selector so that it outputs 5 volts. Alright, let's test the buck converter before we continue. And it's running at 5 volts. Perfect. All the servos seem to be fully powered, and it's maxing out at 2.1 amps. Keep in mind that the buck converter has a maximum of 3 amps, and currently the Pico is powered by USB. According to the spec sheet, the Pico shouldn't use any more than 100 milliamps, so it should fit easily into the 3 amp limit. It looks like the buck converter is going to be my best option. This means I can use the same batteries as my spot micro build, and now I can start designing the chassis. Please stay tuned for project updates, and thanks for watching. <laughs>